Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to this lesson, extra lesson on Friday. Yay! Um, we're going to carry on working on paper one and two exam paper questions. As I said on um, Monday, sorry, I went blank for a second. Um, as I said on Monday, we're going to be going through um, specific sections. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at specific sections of the maths in on different days so that we can highlight all the difficult sections of that specific, specific thing. So um, I haven't actually looked at it yet as to what I think I'm going to do, but let me just have a look at a textbook and I'll let you know now. Um, but um, obviously I would like to target the stuff that you guys struggle with first. So I think maybe we should do some, we've just done, okay, maybe we should do some I think I think we're going to do some um, differentiation and calculus and max and min. So let's do that on Monday. We're going to look at um, being able to draw the graph, finding the factors using the factor theorem, basically the whole thing from first principles all the way through. We'll work through from Monday onwards. We'll just do old exam paper questions using differentiation, um, and I'll see how we'll definitely do that Monday. And then depending on how many questions we get through, we might do it on Tuesday as well. And then we'll move on to a new topic. Okay, if you guys would like to cover a specific topic, feel free to ask me. Okay, um, right. Refer to the figure. This is a question carrying on with an IB grade 12, uh, 2012 old exam paper. It says, refer to the figure showing the graph of y is equal to f of x. So this is y is equal to f of x, okay? It says, in your answer book, draw a copy of the above graph, and then on the same axis, draw a possible sketch of y is equal to f dash of x. Okay, so I'm going to draw it separately first, and then we can always overlay it onto the graph that they want, okay? We want a graph of y is equal to f dash of x, but what is f dash of x? f dashed of x is the slope. Do you agree? f dashed of x is an equation for the slope. So what do we have? Do you agree that over here, from here to here, we have a negative slope? We'll talk about the fact that it's changing slightly in a minute. From here to here, we have a positive slope. Okay, obviously at this point here, the slope is zero, and at this point here, the slope is zero. And over here, we have a negative slope again. Okay, and admittedly, the slope is changing slightly, okay? It is changing from being a big number to a smaller number, okay, because the gradient is getting less steep as we go around. But basically, we've got a negative slope happening over here. So a negative slope means that we've got it, below the x-axis. The negative slope is going to be below the x-axis and it's going from a bigger number to a smaller number. So I would say that, and this is why we have to overlay it. So I'm going to change color to this blue. I'm going to go, okay, we need that point and that point there, right? At those points, the slope is zero. So at those points, my slope is going to be zero. Okay, right, now, before this point, <clears throat> the slope then is going to be negative, negative, okay, but it's getting to be, it's going towards zero. So I would say that it could possibly look like this. This would be my slope. My slope is a negative value. You've got to think of this as a negative value, not as it is slope, positive slope. What we're saying is the y values of the slope are negative from there to there. From here, to here, the y values are positive, okay? From here to here, the y values are positive, okay? Um, so the slope is getting, is positive from there to there. So it doesn't matter where we go. We can just make it again positive. In fact, we could change it to like that. In fact, it could curve a little bit because of the fact that we know that it starts off being quite um, slow and then speeding up. So it could curve a little bit, but let's not do that. Let's just make it a straight graph. Okay, so it gets to a certain point. At this point, suddenly, 
my slope is zero and then it's negative again. So it's going to skip down and it starts off being very negative. Well, it starts off being negative and then, so basically my graph is negative becoming very negative. So the graph gonna look something like this. So the mark allocation for this would be the fact that it goes through zero at this point. I'm gonna change color again. Then it goes through zero at this point and zero at this point. That it's negative or below the y-axis from here onwards. That it's positive from there onwards and then negative. And that's why it says add a possible sketch, possible sketch of this because there are many options obviously because we don't know the numbers, okay? But those are the options. Okay, so that's quite a nice question. It helps you think about your derivative with respect to your graph. Now it says, refer to the figure showing the graph of a cubic function y is equal to g of x. It says it is has following intercepts. You got minus 4, 0. You got minus 2, 0. You've got minus uh, 0, 0,5, 0. And you've got 8. Okay. It says determine the equation of the graph. You do not need to simplify your answer. Okay, so do you agree that if this was a parabola um, and I gave you this and I gave you this value and this value, what would we do? We'd go y is equal to a, x minus, let's call this p and then call that q, x minus p, x minus q. That's what we do. Now we're going to do exactly the same type of thing except of course we've got three bumps. So we're going to go y is equal to a x plus 4 because obviously it's minus 4 there so we have to swap it then it's x plus 2 and x plus 0,5 right and the reason that has to we have to multiply that a is because we need to find out or we need to confirm that our final answer is going to go through 8 because this graph could do something like this it could go wee and down we and up like that okay so it could do something like that and that is affected by the a so that is why we need to multiply all these out and then see what we can get for our constant and then substitute that in so let's do that so let's multiply out the first two first so y is equal to a x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 8 x plus 0,5, which becomes a x squared plus 6x plus 8, x plus 0,5, which equals a x, now we have to multiply this out, x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times 0,5 is plus 0,5 x squared, and then we got plus 6x times x is 6x squared, 6x times 0.5 is plus 3x, and plus 8x, and plus 4, 8 times 0.5, equals a x cubed. So we've got a half x squared plus 6x squared is 6 comma 5x squared. Then we've got plus 3x plus 8x is plus 11x plus 4. Okay, so therefore do you agree? We know that this cuts at 8. It says that it cuts at 8. So we know that 4a has to equal 8 if we multiply that out. So therefore a is equal to 2. Therefore y is equal to 2 x cubed plus 6 comma 5 x squared plus 11x plus 4 and yes I know some of you are just just multiply the three straight away that's fine no problem with that which becomes 2x cubed plus 6.5 times 2 is going to be 13x squared plus 22x plus 8 and there you go that's the formula so always remember this trick that you need to multiply obviously out the places that you have cut like your x cuts and then obviously you need to multiply all of that by an a because like i said this graph could be very tall or it could be very thin okay and you don't know or very short shall i say and you don't know where it's going to fit so you need to work through it like that 
Right, now, okay, so now we're moving on to paper two. So this is again the IB, um, IB grade 12, um, obviously uh, matric 2012 paper. And obviously I've just ignored some of the questions that aren't in the curriculum anymore, like your transformations and things. So it says given E43, 4, 0, minus 1, and GT1. Determine the value of T if E, F, and G lie on the same straight line. So what are they saying? They want to know if the, what this value would be if they were collinear. So what do we know about that? We know that the gradients have to be the same. Okay. So in other words, the gradient of FG has to equal the gradient of EF or even the gradient of EG, but let's just work with this. So we've got, remember it's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so it's equal to, let's call this 2 and this 1. So it's going to be 1 minus minus 1, 1 minus minus 1 over T minus 0. Okay, equals E is again EF, I'm going to use the F again, is, so it's minus 1 minus 3 all over 0 minus 4. Okay, so let's solve for T. So 1 plus 1 is 2 over T minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 I just realized I can't do that. <laughs> so minus 4 over negative 4. So minus 4 divided by minus 4 is 1. Therefore, do you agree you've got t over 2 is equal to 1? Therefore, 2 is equal to t. There you go. So therefore, the answer for this one, sorry, for the answer for this one is t is equal to 2. Okay, now they say they want triangle FEG is right angled at F. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that, okay, that means that if we had a right angle triangle, <clears throat> and they're saying, uh, don't worry about where this point, oh, let's just plot the point. Okay, um, let me just plot the points, it's easier for you to visualize. Okay, so let's do that. We've got E is 4, 3, so X is 4, Y is 3, that's E, 4, 3. We have F, which is 0, minus 1, that is F. And we have G, which is T, 1, um, I don't know, somewhere over here maybe. So basically we've got this right angle triangle. I'm guessing that it's gone down instead of up, it could have gone up I suppose. And this here is G T1. Okay, so they tell you that this is a right angle. Okay, and they want to know what is that value there. They say determine the value of T so that F E G is a right angle triangle at F. Okay. So what do we know? We know that this side length squared plus this length squared is, has to equal to that length line squared. Okay, you're happy with that? So we should get two values actually for this because it could possibly be that it went up and the triangle did this. Okay, so this could be a possible value for, oh, but it couldn't be because of the one. Okay, I take it back, sorry. Blonde, take it back because of the fact that, and it has to be x y. Yes, no, sorry, it has to be that. Okay, <clears throat> let's try again. Sorry, it has to be up here because of the fact that the y is one, so it's t one, and that's g. Okay, so we've only got one place where it can be because of the fact that we know what the y value is. So, do you agree that this side squared, e f squared? plus gf squared has to equal eg squared in length, okay? ef squared plus fg squared has to equal ge squared because that is Pythagoras and this is the hypotenuse, okay? So, 
we need to find the length of these things. Okay, so I'm going to do it up here. EF equals um, the square root. Oh no, we're just doing EF squared. Sorry, let's try again. <clears throat> is equal to. So E of squared, this point here is naught minus one. So it's equal to Y2 minus Y1. So it doesn't matter which one we do. So I'm gonna go minus one, minus three, all squared plus X2, which is zero, minus X1, which is four, all squared, which is going to be minus one, minus three is minus four, all squared plus minus four, all squared, which is going to be 16 plus 16, which equals 32. Okay, so E of squared is 32. Let's do G of squared. So G of squared is going to be, okay, so again, it's Y2 minus Y1. So it's minus one minus one squared plus zero minus T all squared. So do you agree that becomes minus one minus one is minus two squared, which is four plus t squared. So that's g of squared. Okay, and now we need to work out ef. So ef squared, I'm gonna write it down here, is equal to y2 minus y1. Okay, so again, it's gonna be three minus one squared plus four minus t all squared. So three minus one is two, two squared is four, plus four minus t squared, we have to obviously do, multiply it out. So it becomes four squared is 16, minus eight t plus t squared. Okay, so now this is equal to t squared minus eight t, Plus 16 plus 4 is plus 20. So that is that. And now, finally, we've got, this is EG. We've got EF squared, GF squared, and EG squared. So now we can fill it in here. So EF squared is 32. Plus GF squared is 4 plus T squared is equal to EG squared, which is T squared minus 8T plus 20. So T squared is cancel, which is very nice. Okay, then 32 plus 4 is 36 is equal to minus 8t plus 20. Okay, so if we take that across, we get minus 16 is minus 8t. Therefore, t, no, sorry, we don't. We get 16. Um, so therefore, t is equal to negative 2. And there we go. So the correct value for g, the value for that is t is equal to minus 2. Right, very nice questions because you had to realize, well, this was fairly easy because it was collinear and that you're used to seeing. This one is a little bit more tricky because you had to realize that it is a right angle triangle and then we realize you have to work with lens. Right, let's have a look at the next question. Okay, so we're still on um, coordinate geometry or analytical geometry. And this time they tell us that we've got A, B, C, D as a parallelogram. Okay, and you'll notice that they've already filled in for us the parallel lines, the easy bits. Okay, but they haven't mentioned that this is equal to this and that is equal to that. Okay, we knew that anyway. A is the point minus 2, 5. D is 0.46. B is on the x-axis, so therefore it is going to be something zero. And C we don't know. And it says equation of the line CD is given by this formula. So 2y is equal to minus x plus 16. Okay. It says determine the angle ABO correct to one di decimal digit. Okay, so if you think about this, do you agree that to get that angle there, okay, ABO, we need this gradient, okay, we need the gradient of AB. So to get that angle theta, we need the gradient of AB. But we've been told this is a parallelogram. And one of the things they gave us was the equation for the line CD, which is obviously parallel to AB. 
So if we look at this equation, it doesn't look like anything nice, but we know it is the equation of a straight line, so we can rearrange. So we've got 2y is equal to minus x plus 16. Then if we do get that y is equal to minus x over 2 plus 8. Okay, so what is the gradient of CD? The gradient of CD is equal to minus a half. And that's exactly what the gradient of AB is. So the gradient of AB is negative a half. But we know that tan theta is equal to M, the gradient. So we can therefore substitute this in. We can say tan theta is equal to a half. Now remember, you don't worry about the minus because the minus basically just tells you which angle, I mean, whether it's 180 plus or minus, depending on positive or negative. What we want to do is find the size of the angle now. So we're going to go for tan theta equals half. So if the theta is equal to the second function tan, so let's get out our calculator and we're going to go shift tan of 0.5 close bracket equals and that's 26.57 degrees 26 so therefore that angle there is 26 comma 5 7 degrees 26 oh they said to two, one decimal place so we round that off so it becomes 26 comma 6 <sighs> let me just correct that it becomes 26 comma 6 degrees Okay, now it says determine the equation of line AB in terms of y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, well that's fairly easy because we already have the gradient, it's minus a half. So we've got a y, let me just change color. Um, we've got a y is equal to minus a half x plus c. Why is it minus a half? Because it's the same as that gradient over there. Okay, and now all we need to do is substitute in a point. So let's use minus 2, 5. So we've got 5 is equal to minus a half times by minus 2 plus c. These cancel this, so minus times a minus a plus, so you've got a 1. So 5 is equal to 1 plus c. So c is equal to 4. Therefore, the equation for a, b is y is equal to negative a half x plus 4. So that point there to cut through is 4. Now it says determine the coordinates of b. Okay, well since you've got the equation for a, b, it's pretty easy to find the, the formula, I mean the, the, the coordinate of b, the x coordinate of b. We know that the y coordinate is 0 because it touches the x axis. So therefore we just need the x coordinate. So we can just substitute straight into this line equation. So we've got y is naught is equal to minus a half x plus 4. So we can take the 4 across and we get minus 4 is equal to minus a half x. And then we multiply both sides by 2. Negative 2 actually. The minus cancels the minus and the half cancels with the 2 and you're left with x is equal to 8. So therefore this point here is an 8. There we go. Quite nice there. Right, so now let's look at the next question. Okay, it says in the diagram below, the four series, four sides of a square PQRT are tangents to the circle with center V. Okay, that's very nice. So we've got a nice square. Um, so we know that PQ is perpendicular to PT and vice versa, and they're also all tangents, which is nice. Okay, they tell you that PT is parallel to the x axis. Okay, so what does it mean if they're parallel to x axis? It means that the gradient is zero. Okay, that also means we know what the y value at that point is. Okay, let me show you. Um, they've told us that this is parallel to the x-axis but because this is a square ptqr is a square pqrt is a square we know that this is parallel to this but we also have been told that that's parallel to that right so we know that the y value is there the y value at that point is going to be five because it's going to be equidistant from the x-axis 
Now, because this is a square, this has to be 90 degrees, which means the value here and the value there are the same as well. So therefore, this is 4, 5. And again, because it's a square, we know that these two lines are parallel. Therefore, this y value is going to be negative 1, okay? And the x value is going to be negative 2 because, again, it is 90 degrees going straight up. So the coordinates for t are 4, 5. And the coordinates for q are minus 2, minus 1. There you go. Not too bad, eh? Now it says write down the equation of the circle. Okay, so what else have they told us? They've told us that we've got the four sides of the square, a tangent to the circle, PT, and a parallel. Okay. Do you agree that V is perfectly in the middle of the circle, but that also means it's perfectly in the middle of the square. Okay. So, do you agree that... Let me just show you. Hang on. This distance here, from there to there, all the way down. Okay. It's from minus 2, well, no, the y values. So, it's from 5 to minus 1, so it's 6. It's 6, okay. So, do you agree that half of that would be 3? So, if I went down 3 units, I'd get to V. And if I went down another 3 units, I'd get to this line. So, 5 minus 3 is going to be 2. Okay, that's the Y value. Sorry, that's the Y value. Now, we need to look at the X value. We're going from minus 2 to 4, which is 6. So if I added 3 here, I'd get to 1, and if I add another 3, I'd get to another 1. So therefore, the value of the center circle is 1, 2, okay? So that is the center of the circle. So we've got the formula is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. So do you agree that this would be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals, and now we have to work out the radius. Okay, but do you agree that this length here is the radius? Okay, that length there. And that is going from x equals 1 to x equals 4, so that is 3 units long. So therefore, the radius is going to be 9. There we go. Nice question, I like that question. Now it says, given S equals 3, 4, determine the length of Vs. What the hell's S? Oh, Vs. Okay, given that S is 3, 4. Okay, so S is at X equals 3, Y equals 4. Somewhere here. Okay, so there's a point S, which is at point 3, 4. Okay. Okay, determine whether S34 lies inside the circle, outside the circle, or on the circle. Okay, so the best thing to do is just to substitute these X values into this equation and see what happens to the Y. Okay, so if we go 3 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared is equal to, that's what we're trying to find out. So 3 minus 1 squared is 2, and 2 squared is 4 plus 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4, so that is equal to 8. And that is not the radius, the radius is 9, so it's not that point there. So therefore we can say that it's, let's think about this, we want to know if it lies inside the circle, outside the circle, on the circle. So its radius is actually shorter than 9, so it's actually inside the circle. It's actually lying slightly inside the circle. And the reason being that its radius is not as big as 9. Right, now let's do some trigonometry. So it says, in the diagram below, A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. A, B, C, D, okay. A, C is drawn, okay. A, B is 70, 
BC 60, AD is 50, uh, and DC is 40, and ABC is 34. So show that AC, AC is 39.2 millimeters, correct to one decimal place. Okay, so do you agree that we've got, looking at this triangle here, we're looking, sorry, at that triangle there. And do you agree that we've got two sides and an enclosed angle and we're trying to find the third side? So therefore, we definitely are using the cos rule. We're using the cos rule. So the cos rule says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, which in this case, we're looking at this side here. 70 has been one of the sides. 60 has been one of the other sides. And your 34 has been your angle. So we want side AC, big AC. So we're going to say 8C squared is equal to 70 squared plus, what is that, 60 squared minus 2 times 70 times 60 cos A. Okay, and now all we need to do is get out our calculators and pop that in. So what have we got? We're going to clear it. And we're going to say 70 squared plus 60 squared minus bracket 2 times 70 times 60 times cos of the angle size, which I forgot to write in, which is 34, which is 34, close bracket, equals. And that's squared. <laughs> that is going to be um, AC squared. So don't panic just yet. Let's square it the answer. If I can find my bloody, sorry, can find my mouse. Where is it? There it is. So we're going to square it the answer. And we get 39.19, which is the same as 39.2 rounded off. So there you go. So now we know that we've proven that AC is 39.2 39.2 so this length this length here is 30 39 comma 2 millimeters right now they say we've got this other triangle um adc a d c a d c and they want us to prove that a d c this angle is equal to that correct to one decimal digit. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, no, okay, we've written it. So now, do you agree that we're still going to use the cos rule? Because we've got three sides and we want an angle. Okay, but we need to solve for that angle. So let's do that. So it becomes a squared minus b squared minus c squared is equal to minus 2bc cos a. So then we can divide both sides by minus 2bc, okay, and what are you left with? We're left with minus um, a squared plus b squared plus c squared over negative 2bc is equal to cos a. Right, so now what we need to do is substitute in. So the A is the one that's opposite the angle. So that's going to be negative 39 comma 2 squared plus 40 squared plus 50 squared all divided by negative 2 times by B which is 40 times by C which is 50 and then that is all equal to cos A, so then obviously we have to second function cos this. Okay, so let's get out our calculators. And we've got negative 39.9.2 squared. Um, no, let's just clear this entirely. So we've got negative 39.2 squared plus 40 squared plus 50 squared equals divided by bracket negative negative 2 multiplied by 40 multiplied by 50 close bracket equals SD button negative 0.64 I messed up um, 
Okay, so let's leave it at 0 0.64. So that's 0 0.64 is equal to cos A. So now we need to do a second function. So we're going to go shift cos of the answer, close bracket, equals, and that's 129.85. But if we subtract that from 180, you get 50.1. Because why? Because guys, I went second function cos of minus 0 0.64 when it, I'd already told you that you ignore the negative. You always just put it in of the value. So let's do it again. Shift cos of 0 0.64 or close bracket equals 50.2 and that's exactly what they wanted okay they wanted 50.1 but that's a rounding error so therefore we can say therefore we can say a is equal to 50 comma 2 degrees and if you said 0.2 in the mem they asked you for 50.1 it's fine there is room for rounding errors but if there are subsequent questions that require that you use that answer then obviously you need to use what they have supplied okay right let's do one more question it says solve for theta if the theta is between minus 180 and 180 okay and you've got 2 sine 90 minus theta is equal to 1 8 and it says give your answer correct to one de decimal digit so i'm just going to write a cast all stations to Cape Town diagram a cast diagram so you've got 2 sine of 90 minus theta is equal to 1 eighth okay so do you agree that sine of 90 minus theta is equal to an eighth divided by 2 okay which means what if it's divided by 2 then it's the same as 1 over 16 okay and that's sine of 90 minus theta right so what i would do at this point is i would section function sign it to find what 90 minus theta is so i've got 90 minus theta is equal to second function 1 over 16. right so let's pop that into the calculator so we got shift sine uh, fraction 1 divided by 16 um, move it over close bracket equals 3.58 so that's 3.58 so I've got 90 minus theta is equal to 3.58 3 comma 5 8 therefore do you agree that theta is an equal 90 minus 3 comma 5 um, 8 that's supposed to be an 8 which is going to be what so it's going to be 90 minus 3.58 and that is going to give you 86.42 so theta is equal to 86.42 now it says they want it for theta is minus 180 degrees plus 180 degrees but this is a cos graph so therefore it has a period of 360 so it's going to be 86.41 plus k 360 so if you add 360 it's way out and if you subtract 360 it's way out so that's it that's the only answer 86.4 Right, now it says, do we have time yes, to do? Simplify without using a calculator, showing all working details. Okay, you know what great tools, we're actually gonna start, no we're not. We'll leave this for when we do trig. So on Monday, we're gonna do calculus and all different types of exam paper questions and calculus. Have a great day.